Okay, second year integration. Um, you should have a pen and paper ready to do some of the questions later on in this video. Right, each of these integrations is going to be related to a differentiation that you already know. So here is a classic differentiation. You did it by chain rule earlier in the year. So y equals something in a bracket to a power of n up here. The way that we differentiate it is you look at whatever n was, we times down by that, so it came out the beginning. We took one away from the power, and then we multiplied by, it's the derivative of whatever's inside, but in this case, it's just a. So we get an extra a out here. With integration, we want to reverse that process. So we're gonna do it kind of in the opposite order here. So we're gonna be integrating something in a bracket like this. With integration, instead of the power going down by one, we're gonna add one to the power. So I've still got the bracket that I had before, ax plus b. We're gonna add one to the power, which is n plus one. And now we're gonna divide by the new power. So I'm gonna write it like this, one over n plus one. One final thing to do, the equivalent of timesing out by this a would be dividing by this a. Let's just do it at the end here. We could neaten it up later. So the operations here, add one to the power, divide by the new power, and then we're gonna divide by a in this case. Notice that the b didn't really affect it. There's one final thing I'm missing on this integration. Whenever we integrate, we need a plus c as well. All of the integrations we're gonna be doing follow the same sort of pattern. We are undoing differentiation. So let's have a look at this one. On this one, when we're differentiating e to the power of something here, we times down by a, and then the power stays the same. Remember that that's the special thing about exponential, it's the thing that stays the same when you differentiate. The only thing that's changed is we uh, multiply down by this constant a. So when we're integrating, doing the opposite of that, well, we're still gonna have the same power, e to the ax plus b, but this time we're gonna divide by a. Again, we need a plus c at the end because we've integrated. Right, two more, we're gonna do sine and cos. Uh, just before we start that, those of you in my class will recognize this, other classes, um, I'll introduce it to you. This is the trig wheel. When we differentiate, sine differentiates to cos, cos differentiates to minus sine, minus sine differentiates to minus cos, and then cos differentiates to sine. Whenever we differentiate, we just go one step around the wheel. Integrating is going the opposite way around the wheel. So sine integrates to minus cos, which integrates to minus sine, which integrates to cos, which integrates back around to sine. I think this is the most easy way of remembering which way around they go. I remember the differentiation one. I would draw it if I was in the exam, and then integration is just going the opposite way around. Whenever we integrate, we need to pick up a plus c as well. So sine would integrate to minus cos x plus c. Let's look at it with some constants around. So, here they are written like we had with the chain rule and with the uh, different uh, the e. If we've got sine with some linear factor inside, then it differentiated to cos and we times that by the a. Cos differentiates to minus sine, but again, we multiply it out by the a. So if we are integrating these things, we're going the opposite way around. So remember the wheel on here, if we've got sine, it integrates to minus cos, so sine will integrate to minus cos of ax plus b. We need to divide by the a, so one over a, and then we've got a plus c on the end. Doing the other one, cos, well again, we can get our wheel out. Cos integrates to sine. So this one's nicer. So cos integrates to sine of ax plus b, we divide by the a, and then we have a plus c at the end. Right, those are all the basic ones. They are on the written notes for you as well. Um, so you've got the basic versions of them on the first page, and then if you turn over a page, you have uh, these ones. You might want to have the notes next to you when we uh, do some questions with it. I'm just gonna go one, through one example where we've got actual numbers in there. So. Integrating this, I've got some actual numbers rather than just keeping them as a's and b's. Cos goes to sine, so we're gonna get sine 
of 2x, oop, 2x plus 1. We divide by 2, so it's a half sine of 2x plus 1, and then we get a plus thing. That's all there is to it. We're looking things up in the table, we're writing down the result. Right, I've got three questions for you. What I'd like you to do in a minute is pause the video and have a go at each of these. I'll go through the answers on screen. So pause the video, get some paper, write them down. Cool. Okay, let's do that first one. e to the minus 2x. Well, it's going to integrate 2. We're still going to have e to the minus 2x. Uh, we're going to divide by whatever a was, which is minus 2. I'm going to write it like this minus a half of it. If you had the minus on the bottom, that's fine too, but you could bring it up to the top, it's the same thing. And then plus c. General rule of thumb in the exam, the plus c is usually worth a mark, so it's, it's an easy one to forget. Right, this one, sine goes to minus cos, so we're going to get minus, I'm going to leave a little bit of room here because I know I'm going to put a constant in in a minute. We're going to get uh, 4x plus 1, and then we're going to have a divide by 4. Final thing, plus c. Right, last one, it's one of these bracket ones. We add 1 to the bracket, 6, we divide by that, so a sixth, and then we're going to divide by 3, plus c. Now I'm just going to neaten it up a bit, we've got to divide by 3, we've got to divide by 6, that's the same as a divide by 18. 3x minus 1 to the 6 plus c. If you've written it as like this bracket all over six, all over 18, that's fine too. It's just different ways of writing it. Okay, right. On the sheets, exercise 1, some examples, and then exercise 2, you should be able to attempt all of those. Um, cool.